Yersinia is the topic and I will talk about two types of Yersinia in this video. The first is Yersinia pestis and the second is Yersinia enterocolitica. So the first one is Yersinia pestis. Yersinia pestis is famous for causing a very severe medical condition known as the plague. Plague is also very famous. It occurs worldwide and is notorious for being transmitted to humans from rodents. And in particular, the type of rodents include rats, mice, and squirrels. Human-to-human -human transmission then occurs via inhaling droplets. And plague is something that can occur worldwide. And in particular, in the United States, it is endemic to a region in the southwest and I will show you a map of that. So here's a map of the United States and, and it shows the areas that have the most cases of plague and I'll label these states. This is Arizona. This state of course is California and this state which seems to have the largest cluster is the state called New Mexico. It's part of the United States, but it's called New Mexico. So if someone does unfortunately develop plague, what type of symptoms? Well, the one that is by far the biggest and most famous is bubonic plague. And it's given the term bubonic because of these buboes that they can develop. And these are essentially just swollen lymph nodes that are in either the armpit or the groin area. Medically, that would be the axillary lymph nodes or the inguinal lymph nodes. So the symptoms of bubonic plague include fever, chills, as mentioned, this pretty uh, impressive or massive lymphadenopathy and then the patient can also progress to confusion and 60 percent of the time the patient can die most commonly because of septicemia. Another type of plague that is caused by the same organism is known as pneumonic plague and pneumonic plague is of course the type that's presenting, as the name would imply, as a primary lung infection. So in addition to fever and chills, the patient will also present with difficulty breathing, dyspnea, and will also have blood in their sputum, so coughing up blood, hemoptysis. In terms of diagnosis, you need to isolate the organism Yersinia pestis, and that can be done via blood cultures or sputum cultures. And if the person does indeed have uh, pulmonary symptoms, then a chest x-ray is also very appropriate. And in terms of treatment, this is treated with antibiotics such as streptomycin or gentamicin. And of course, because of the severe infectious nature of this condition, patient also should be isolated. So now let's turn our attention to the other type of Yersinia, which is Yersinia enterocolitica. And this Yersinia is spread due to contaminated food and water. So it's spread essentially the fecal oral route. And its symptoms are different. Its symptoms are more like a diarrheal disease. And what's a very important point that I want you to remember about this presentation is that because the enterolytica type of Yersinia affects the terminal ileum segment of the colon, it can present with right lower quadrant pain and thus mimic appendicitis 
because as you can recall, appendicitis also presents with right lower quadrant pain. Patient can also have a fever. In terms of diagnosing this, similar tests are done such as blood cultures and in terms of treatment, again, antibiotics are used. Most commonly either cephalosporins or fluoroquinolones. And as always with these types of uh, illnesses, prevention is very important. So proper food handling is of great importance in preventing this. So now let's take a look at a couple of clinical vignettes. A Native American man is brought to a rural hospital in New Mexico, USA. On arrival, he is unconscious with severe bronchopneumonia. Family members state that he has suffered the sudden onset of chills, fever, and headache several days ago. One day later, the man complained of chest pain and difficulty breathing and coughed up blood-tinged sputum. Chest x-ray reveals patchy infiltrates and segmental consolidation. Which of the following organisms is most likely cause of this man's pneumonia? The main th clue in this question is the epidemiology and um, other than that you know there hasn't been any cultures done so it's difficult to tell other than just where he's from but based on what we discussed earlier that region of the US is endemic for Yersinia pestis and this is of course a case of pneumonic plague and finally 47-year-old car salesman presents to the clinic complaining of right lower quadrant pain that began 48 hours earlier. He has been previously healthy and without any history of GI disease. He denies any nausea or vomiting. Over the past 48 hours, he has developed a fever and non-bloody diarrhea. The temperature is about 38.3 Celsius, and there is localized right lower quadrant tenderness without mass. Rectal exam reveals watery brown stool that is GUAC negative. Which of the following is the most likely explanation for the patient's symptoms? Well, right lower quadrant abdominal pain is a very common presentation in appendicitis. So I remember uh, mentioning that this is a very important point in Yersinia enterocolitica but in addition he does have that diarrhea presentation so those two things combined based on the answer choices the most uh, likely explanation would be choice E